Let's continue our game. As Queen Fabia of the Imps Dynasty. And do I click load game? <laughs> you invested everything in the theater. You did you sure did. Alright, everyone, uh type in exclamation mark join. And you will then join into one of the factions. You might be something else than you were before, I think, maybe. The North is very overrepresented here. I mean, if you return, yeah, you just return to it. I mean, it's a little, I'm not sure. Do you even need to? Oh yeah, it's they, them. Hmm. We'll leave it up for a moment longer. But I think everyone did join now. Maybe we can go back, can't we? Sorry, people. Okay, join again. And remember to put in your, uh, your preferred pronoun. There we go. It's a little bit unclear. It, it really doesn't say here. I'm, 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 I would have assumed it takes what it was before. Here we have a second already. I missed you a bit. I'm sorry. You're a mutton for punishment. <laughs> the puns are forever amazing for me. We have a lot of chiefs in the north. Okay, we'll get going. You can always join later. So let's see here. Ah, very good. Hat 50 comes to the rescue of the grandees. Joining in there. I didn't kill your father. Now this is, this is the queen Fabia. Th this, this ain't me. This is a new person here. <laughs> let's see. Um, let's do the coronation first. Don't need to meet the council unless we're actually coronated. Your Majesty, you may have won the throne from Monarch Emperor, but you must still answer to the council. As a tradition, they will decide what happens at your coronation. Let's see. She's going to be insolent. Insolent as heck, I think. But it's my coronation. It's an absolute this is not an absolute monarchy it, everything has to be run past the council vote even this shall we call the nobles in our treasury is too low to invite foreign dignitaries mm -hmm. so what should we do you guys don't know yet what you want so it's a little bit of a blind thing for you as well I think we should go with the with the tradition here. Which is this tradition. Obviously see. Even the monarch votes for see. Uh Captain Pleb, you need to join first. Exclamation mark join. Space, he, she, or they. Otherwise, your vote doesn't count. I'll leave it up until Captain Bleb had a chance to join.
see. You want to keep it traditional, huh? All right, then. We'll keep it traditional. The queen will be thrown into the river. It is decided. The queen will be thrown into the river. Stability goes up, authority goes down. What kind of coronation is that? A very traditional ceremony, dating back to Queen Alma the Wise. It's meant to represent you being reborn as a true queen. The nobles pick you up and carry you out to the Treadwater River, hurling you into the shallow water with a cheer. When you climb back out of the bank, soaking wet, the Chancellor slips forward and places the crown upon your head. It is your imagination or are some of the nobles' stifling giggles. But the new queen will drown in the river like a rebellion. <laughs> we have much, yeah, you guys have much to do. And so do we. Let's see. Um, the path to victory. Let's go with that. Your majesty, the history books do not look kindly upon usurpers. Unless, of course, they prove themselves worthy of the throne they have stolen. When you die, how do you hope the kingdom will remember you? Let's see. She's uh, she's from the south, isn't she? She's a grandee in reality. So <laughs> As the architect of a new golden age. A lofty goal indeed. I suggest over the next few years you focus on improving the kingdom's overall trade as much as possible. Once we have an heir, I will return to discuss how your ambition is progressing. Good luck, your majesty. Now let's meet the council, shall we? Um. Okay, I can't click anything. Huh. Um. Okay. Let me... See if I can't do anything about this. Thank you for the world and welcome. If you want to join, you need to type in exclamation mark join and then your he his is something. This is a known issue. Darn. Scroll to the left by clicking on the ocean. Um Ah! Woo. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's great. Fix it. That's amazing. The ninth has smiled upon us and our plans have come to fruition. Verily, there is much to celebrate, says Grandee Sister Mera. The second. Now remember your duty. You must ensure that the Grandee's interests are in full throughout the kingdom. Ninth, bless the south. There's a similarity bug in Pokemon Go and is fixed similarity. Wait, is, is this from the same company? No. Indeed, the ninth bless us all. Now introduce yourself to the rest of the council, but don't forget what I told you today. Introduce yourself to the council of the East first. An honor to finally make your acquaintance. Ah, wait, no, no. That's the wrong voice. An honor to make, uh, to finally make her acquaintance, your grace. <laughs> May you escape the doom that befell your predecessor. Good luck in the days ahead, your highness. You'll need it, dealing with us, lot. The most dapper rat for sure. The council hall immediately fills with raised voices, meanwhile. What do you think? Will she be a good little queen and do as she's told? Too early to tell. We have, we should have a backup plan, just in case. There's supposed to be a pop-up window asking you if you want to rebalance the teams. It, re uh, it renders incorrectly, but still blocks input. Um, can I see that somewhere? Is that for me? Is that a pop-up on the on the stream, or is it in the game? Like, is there an option here to do that? Oh, I don't like that. That is illegal under GDPR. This is an opt-in, not an opt-out 
thing. Ah, well. Silly little American companies, they don't give a flying whatsoever. Can I rebalance this? Um... Let's see. No, I don't. I don't really have that option. Like, I can turn this on and off. But... That's really all. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, thanks. I'll, I'll know for next time. I'll know for next time. But it's a thing I have to do on the stream, yeah? It's not something in the game. I felt a bit odd. Should be in the game. Like, I'm not watching my own stream. <laughs> Alright. Uh, let's end the season then. Oscar of the Kit of Maplebutt clan, legendary northern prodigy, stands precariously on a longhouse crossbeam, joining as if in a trance. Chiefs of the North, we all know I should be on the throne, not this imposter queen Fabia. How do we make that happen? Okay, northern lords, this is your vote. That's actually fairly balanced right now. It's just hideways, hardways, we don't see it. Okay. Alright. Thanks for the for the info there. Northern Lords, you need to vote here. Pick a goal. Another horn bl horn blower attempt. Okay, the, the north is divided. An uprising. Raise the treasury. Voting is closed. The chiefs plan to incite a peasant uprising to overthrow the queen before swooping in to steal the throne for themselves. To, adv to advance this scheme, the chiefs must raise the treasury to 2,000 or more in two seasons. Well, that is incredible. Kaya of the North Windhimian Dynasty, notorious Eastern Elder, leans delicately on a podium, speaking in a melodious voice. My fellow counts, in ancient times the East was its own proud kingdom. We can bring back those days of glory, but not while the false Queen Fabia wears the crown. Okay, counts. How do you want to do this? <laughs> Faith in the desert folk is too high. <laughs> How will you try to usurp the Queen Fabia? Ascension. Lower own faith. Lower own defiance. Possession. What happens if we have a tie here? We'll find out. Okay. Ascension, I think it is. Let's go back here. The Counts plan to induct the Queen into the secret cult and offer her immortality in exchange for the throne. First, they must reduce the power of the Eastern Church. To advance their scheme, the Counts must lower their faith to four or less in three seasons. Zaquiel of the Fusion Warrior lineage, well-known southern prodigy, stands bathed in sunshine, speaking softly. Praise be. Fabia now sits on the throne and the Grandees are in charge, but the other regions will already be scheming to depose her. Do we stay loyal to the new queen or cut our losses and put me on the throne instead? Let's see what you got, Grandees. 
Where will you go? I think there might be an ad break or something. <laughs> Don't listen to Dust. Dust is a known insurrectionist. Look at that. They brought her to the throne and they're darn well gonna make sure that she stays on that throne. That's some loyalty right there. Aid the queen. Increase the trade. That settles it then. Glory to the queen and glory to the ninth god. But we can always change our minds if Fabi ever gets out of line. We can take up arms and get rid of the old-fashioned way. Grandee's goal is to aid the queen by countering the other region's scheme as much as they can. They will win the game if the queen produces an heir and completes her ambition. However, if defiance gets too high, they can still change their minds and rise up in rebellion. <laughs> I have no proof of your rebellious acts that you just called your own rebellious acts. <laughs> what proof do I need? Continue to the laws of land. Everyone knows what they need to do, yes? So, the North wants to increase the treasury. Hi. The Counts want to decrease their faith to four or less in three seasons. Now, the Grandees need to avoid all of that and help us increasing trade. Alright. Let's go. What do I want? Monarch's Iron Choice. I think this one is fun. We're gonna try that. The pillar in the palace is now prepped. <laughs> My queen, don't you want money? Uh, I don't know. Money is, is kind of nice. I come from money, you know. Missing bees. Missing nobles. Why is everything missing in your account? In, in your county over there? What are you doing? Your highness, terrible news from the east. The bees have vanished. Excellent. You can have outdoor picnics in peace. This is no small matter. We counts rely on the bees for our honey trade, but it's worse than that. Far worse. In the east, bees are bringers of good fortune. We look after them and they look after us. It's a grim omen indeed if they have deserted us. Our peasants are scared that we've offended the bees somehow. We must track them down. Certainly would be giving your loyalists a tax lien, no? <laughs> yes, I might just. I might just do so. Bees come and go. Let, na take, let nature take its course. Send messages to investigate other regions. Ask the peasants if they noticed anything wrong. Let's see. I think, I think, I think it's just the nature thing. We just planted more flowers and bees came north. More mead for us. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Bees come and go. It's, uh, it's nature, clearly. So, exclamation mark, vote A, B, C. Whichever you feel is right. Let's clearly vote A. A is the only sensible option. I don't know what you mean about B. B is silly. Ah, oh, no, no, no. We, we're, we're good. We're done. Perfectly right. No, no, no. It's all good. That's perfectly correct. <laughs> Bees come and go. Let na let's let nature take its course. As the eastern bee <laughs> rigged, I hear. See, we have to think like a bee, which means vote for B. For B. B, B for B. No, 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 no. A was correct. 
A for apiary, which is where they live. So, yeah. As the Eastern Bee has language empty, Eastern peasants start sewing bee emblems onto their shirts in a vain effort to bring them back. Still, other nobles profit from the situation. The counts had quite the monopoly on honey, and this has given them the chance to get into the market. Southern trade can't go any higher. Fear grows and more and more amongst the counts who complain that the crown cares nothing for their troubles. Oh no. Um. Is that supposed to be there? <laughs> Should this not be there? Oh no, did I get did I get ourselves stuck here? Oh. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Oh no. Oh goodness. <laughs> yeah, that might just be the pop up. Okay. Let's talk about our honor guard, shall we? Oh no, we can't click anything. Um Wait. Okay, I clicked that away. I don't know what it said, but we managed it. <laughs> we see beyond the edge of the world, yes. We sure do. That notice is on the Z axis, when it's meant to be X and Y, maybe, yeah. The North can protect your trust. Uh-huh. Yes, like the North tried to protect the Emperor. As a tradition, each region offers a selection of elite guards, the chiefs with their own most famous warrior heroes, the counts with knights of the Order of the Drowned Rose, and the grandees with their fiercest battle nuns from the Sisterhood of Steels. Well, the Sisters of Steel are chosen by the Ninth God. Surely they will be chosen by you as well. I've made my decision. And it will be the southern nuns. The north offers the best protections. The finest warriors, I can't be denied. It might be the finest warriors, but I'm not looking for warriors to do, defend me. I'm looking for bodyguards. The grandees plan to cut you. They are my loyal subjects. They have put me on this throne and they will, they will offer their lives. Their very lives to keep me there. What does this mask icon mean here? Does anyone know? Is it like a scheme thing? Like this is the scheme? The battle nuns arrive in the palace a few weeks later. They nod to us silently. They summon steel masks, betraying nothing. The grandees are loyal. Look, it says here, loyalist. It says right there. Of course they're loyal. Now let's look into the Eastern Missing Nobles. I think there might be an issue to really focus our attentions on. Majesty, a number of grandees have gone missing in the East. They travel to Count Liverpool Moneywind's castle to negotiate a trade agreement, but they should have returned weeks ago. The missing grandees... The missing grandees never made it to my lands. They most likely got lost. The east is a dangerous place. Where could they have gone, though? Or if they made it, in, they need to maintain it. Loyal as long those tax breaks keep coming. <laughs> Just north of my estate lies the Mold Patter Forest, to the west, the Twilight Lakeland, and to the south, the Larian's Haunt. I like to live remotely. Does wonders for the soul. Who's gone missing? Anyone I care about? Three grandees are missing. Grandee at 50, Zaquin, and Grandee System Era 866 II. I'm certain that this is some kind of ploy by Count Liverpool Moneywood. In a few months' time, he'll quietly offer us a ransom. Blood in stars. Don't be so foolish. We'll find them. We just have to decide where to focus our efforts. Well. We could just 
execute him. <laughs> uh, let's see. We will not be executing the Count. Or if they made it and need to maintain it. You can't stay indebted to the South River. You are the queen of the whole kingdom. You came from the Grand... De Wait, it's too fast. You came from the South and it'll surely be at the southmost... <laughs> <laughs> Someone is sad we're not allowing to kill the Count. Very good. I'm not beholden to the South. I just remember where it came from. Eladian's Haunt is where we go. Is to get lost in the forest. I agree. It's not somewhere we would like to go. No, no. A detachment of Count Liverpool Moneywind's bravest knights venture into the bedeviled marshland known as Eladian's Haunt. The missing grandees are found alive and well, if a little bedraggled. Ninth, bless you. We are in debt to you. Ninth, preserve us. We've been eating bugs for a month. Please take this as a thank you. Uh, it's an antique teapot from the Cursed Age. We found it in the book. Would you believe it? Why, thank you. A teapot, you can keep it. This is an ancient artifact of the East. It should be returned to the Counts. And so it shall be. Ah, uh, much appreciated, your grace. We appreciate the gesture. You keep your bastards in there. <laughs> I think I need to whitelist the term bastard. <laughs> Game doesn't like it. Uh, Twitch doesn't like it. Alright, let's uh, end the season. <laughs> and we have an auction to uh, start here. So, you guys know what to do. Certainly. We could use some... Trade or stability. So maybe build a Grand Bazaar. Grand Bazaar sounds great. The East certainly could use some more trade. Look at that. Three trade. That's not a lot. Surely it's not a lot. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> <clears throat> Captain Bleb can outdo you all. I love the one gold. It's, um... Yeah? Can someone please bid for something that is not one gold on, on the observatory? Yes, thank you. Very good. That's a cheap shot. Trying to build something for one gold. <laughs> ah, look at that. A library and a grand bazaar. How very fortunate. It's a much different game if you have a loyalist faction, I must say. Alright. So the trade went up. Authority went up. Very close call. Stop the presses. A stinging problem. I think we might have found the bees. But let's find the spells first. <clears throat> Your Majesty, it's important you found a spell sooner than later. Um, We'll take anyone, really. Anyone. Yes, yes. It's an easy enough decision. Your Maddie into the grandees as we agreed before you took the throne, right? Right? Told you they came north. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's check out that stinging problem. Having ignored the bee troubles in the east, you've practically forgotten about the situation. Actually, I haven't. Buy pride worldwide. Be pride worldwide, sure. Until Chief Captain Pleb stamps in, his face swollen and covered with stings. Those damned counts. They bet they sent those bees off there just to trouble us. They've been attacking you? Ah, it's terrible. By the old gods, those bees must be destroyed. None dares go outside. Our markets are ruined. The markets? Not the markets. We need the markets. 
Sevens, take us. These bees are our livelihood. If they're killed, they'll bring bad luck to all of us. Then you should have taken better care of them, shouldn't you? Well... Did you not fund the new honey farm? Well... Let's see, what do I do? I don't think... Hmm. I think... The church should help heal the peasants. Let's start that vote. We need that bee money. How do we get mead when we have no bees? These are unfortunately too rapid. God. Do I like jazz? So Was that question directed at me? Not in particular, I don't think. Alright. The church could help to heal the peasants. Very good. Apparently we're all in agreement there. Except for one northerner that thinks differently than the rest of us. How quaint. Get the church to help heal the peasants. Let's go. Captain Pleb looks skeptical, but apparently, uh, but agrees and hurries away to drag more priests to his lands. Not every priest is happy about the risk of stinging, but enough attend the peasants to get them in better shape for work. Soon the markets have returned to normal. Faith is now dutiful. Trade is now opulent. We done did it. We done did it. <clears throat> oh, a dynasty event. That's different. Stop the presses. Let's see. Your grace, some anonymous firebrand in the east is spreading most inflammatory pamphlets. They're casting aspirations against you. <laughs> What's new? Something's different this time. They're not just calling you a bad queen. They're criticizing the very concept of monarchy. Well, I heard that before. This is republicanism and not in Kerth, but our very own kingdom. What should we do? Authority is now ineffective. Okay. So, um... Allow the pamphlets to circulate, clearly. What can we not have? No, we'll just we'll just have a we'll just have a regular vote. Priests in your backyard, you can always use them as giant uh, ice giant bait. Yes, you can. Very good, you can. Okay, everyone, let's start the vote. Very even right now. Okay. Allow the pamphlets to circulate. But we must do something. You expect us to let the common folk attack the very foundations of society? Thanks to the permissive attitude, the East quickly becomes a haven for radical thought. Intellectuals travel from across Celeste Earth to debate politics and philosophy. Conversation, wine and money flow in equal measure. Trade is now wealthy. Look at that. Four up to seven. For the first time, people across the kingdom seriously contemplate the idea of a republic. But for now, it remains a fringe faction of rabble-rousers and radicals. Now, let's end this season, then. Inside this smoky northern clan hall buried in snow, Chief Dust paces up and down the length of this room. Frau's buried in frustration. It's not enough. The common folk couldn't care less about the queen's or her hoarded wealth. How are we supposed to incite an uprising in this climate? <laughs> hey, you had a better climate last time. Sounds like a great idea. We should overthrow the queen. Wait, what do you mean we were doing that? <laughs> Listen. Listen. Careful now. Hold up. 
We should start by ensuring the queen actually has some wealth to flaunt. A shame the queen seems determined to be destitute. Perhaps she's just really bad with money. The chief's aim is to raise the treasury to 2,000 or more. Alright, let's see. I think the counts could use a little tax break. I think the counts could use a little tax break. Yeah, sounds right to me. They all can? Everyone can take a tax break? Are you sure? I don't think so. Well, but if our treasury goes to zero, we also lose, so we can't go that low. So... Everyone or no one? <laughs> Very all or nothing in the north. You need money, and while we might grumble in our homes, the realm needs funds, it's true. Maybe the grandees can chip in a little bit. You know? No, that's fine. We'll keep it here. All good. Okay. Eligible options. Saint or sinner dealing with the swarm. <laughs> Give the grand some love. Uh, well, I'll keep it in mind. Don't worry there. I found three potential matches for you. Ah, uh, yes. Sure. Alright, let's see the eligible candidates. They whisk away the cloth from the first portrait. This is Odfin, firstborn son of the northern king Ulf Maplebot's clan. He's our typical northern lad, big, brawny and honest, in the same way an axe to the face is honest. Despite that, he's clearly got some brains and he's an avid reader with a vast library. People say he nurses a grudge though. Sure. This is Xenia, the eldest daughter of the Eastern, uh, Eastern North Wind Minion Dynasty. I'm not sure why the artist made her look so severe. Just a trick of the light, perhaps. A very pious young lady. She's obsessed with their family's legacy. Intriguing, intriguing. And finally, from the south, Rudolfo, the eldest son of the Sister Error lineage. He's... Reputed to have an ego of the size of the sun, but there's nothing wrong with confidence. Like many in the south, he claims to put his faith in the ninth god above all worldly concerns. And he's got grand plans by all accounts. He wants to change the world. Not bad, not bad at all. Oh, big boy. A grudge from my clan? No, the north would never hold a grudge. No, no. I think Rudolfo is the only real choice here. The South put me on the throne and it will keep me there. The North keeps their grudges in a book. Oh my, are they dwarves possibly? Uh, I've made my decision. I refuse to marry any of them. <laughs> Rudolfo of the South, of course. Excellent. They will make the arrangements. So we can't play favorites for every every time. Like you need to understand that, grandees. We can't get them a good reason to attack us. So let's deal with that swarm, shall we? Your greatness. Some good news from the north about that bee problem. The priests have been making up herbal ointments and treating stings. And I think they've discovered some new antivenom that's even more effective. But we don't have enough to test properly. Okay. No more bee talk. Crown financially contributes to the research. And Northern Church is on his own. Yeah, we're not helping. <laughs> yes, let's talk in your mead holes. 
disgusting inbreeding. Now, it doesn't say we're related, you know? Not everyone from the south is related. We do have friends as well down there. Yep, that very much would put you as serious. So, apparently it's a faith challenge that everyone wants here. The counts are woefully underrepresented. I'm so sorry. You're standing strong, though. Let's go. The research looks in danger of fizzling out before the Archbishop swoops in to help. He delegates priests all across the north to test his new remedy, and even pays the chiefs to use their estates as hospitals. Some chiefs' wealth has increased. The council eagerly awaits the results. Say we're putting our faith in the church, it's working. Come from their line and their patrols is from the same line. No, 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 no. You're thinking of a different line, with a very similar name, very similar looks, very similar everything. It's a different line entirely, though. It's, it's an easy mistake to make for foreigners. You wouldn't you wouldn't know. You wouldn't understand. It's uh, no problem. Don't worry. We understand. We don't take it personally that you think like that. All I'm saying is every grandee claims to have a saint in his ancestry. Your great-great-grandfather was probably a common dullard. Shut your mouth, you hedge-born puzzle wit! His name was Saint Umber, and he defeated the werewolf of Ranjar by turning it into dust in an instant, according to my grandmother. If you're so sure about your little wager, a bag of gold says your ancestor was no saint. You're on. What's all this? Count Kementari is spreading a damnable lies about my great-grandfather. Great-great-grandfather, even. I think he was a saint. If you really think he was a saint, then dig him up. Saints are incorruptible. Even after death, they do not decay. Very well, I request the council permission to exhume my ancestor and prove this fool wrong. Um... Let's see. Counts will... Uh, we will split the south between us. <laughs> no, what? Okay, we'll just start the war. I, I have no preference here. Um, Let's see what you guys have to say. Should that body be exhumed? The Archbishop could do like a background check. Sign up for ancestry. <clears throat> Simply want to know. I find this whole thing funny. <laughs> okay, we're tied at uh, three. So I am the tiebreaker. Now listen here. Listen here. You can have my vote if you vote next for my requirement. I will break it in your direction. If you then promise next time I need your vote. No, 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 no. You type out, I promise I will vote with you next time. And then you tell me what you want me to vote. Hey. Let's see. <laughs> I have the oath of Dapper Rat, okay. Okay, I have one, two for dig, and one for not dig. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry then. Okay. All right, now that's all for dig. Nah. I have three votes in my hand here for the next one. Ninth, bless you, your highness. Now where's my shovel? <laughs> A few days later, the corpse of Hat 50's great-great-grandfather is exhumed from his resting place in the northern necropolis. 
Wonderful. I was right. Centuries in the ground, but Saint Umber looks as fresh as a daisy. Is that him? <laughs> wow. It really is a miracle. Fine. Take your money. Word quickly spreads of the miracle of Saint Umber. Peasants across the south and others name uh, add, add another name to their prayers. Now, little does the queen know, I'm the most deferent. Deferent is my bastard. <gasps> I've been betrayed? You will not vote? As you promised? In a tiny village, far to the east, two counts meet in a derelict tavern. No one dares even glance in their direction. Peasants all across my lands are rejecting the ninth god. Yes, and the tithe collectors don't dare knock at my door. <laughs> now, we must not falter. If the queen crows browed, we can offer her the ultimate reward. Immortality. For the next stage of their scheme, the counts must raise authority to five or more in four seasons. Mm-hmm. Call for unity, royal gamble. After voting, nobles can change their minds and vote for a different option. Yeah, let's go with that. And end the year. I shall still vote should I not bring my family harm. Hmm? Ha, and there the support of the home wavers. No, 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 no. The, the home, they like to say rebel. See, rebel is a form of a spice. We put it in our bread. See? It's rebel bread. Did the queen just give up her veto rights? Yes, she did. She believes in her people. She does not need such. No, no. Incorruptible. No, she didn't. Uh, she, uh, she gave up her right to vote, not veto. Exactly. Rebel. Exactly. Now you understand. Now you get it. Anti-venom research. Since the north... Asked about it. Let's let's check into this B situation. Your Highness, I'm pleased to announce that we have discovered an effective anti over in the north. Huzzah! Rebel. In fancy writing and everything, yes. Now you understand. See, the south isn't so weird. Everyone should be on the rebel train. <laughs> Indeed, the gods are good. The only thing is... Yes. Yes, the only thing that unfortunately the chief not too focused on profit to understand how important it is for my hardworking priests to be recognized for their efforts. Look, we're as devout as anyone, but it was our peasants who went through hell to get us this remedy. You have no idea what we're going through hell means, but you will unless you change your ways. All right, who should profit from the anti-venom discoveries? Oh god, there's a lot going on here. A lot going on. Let's see. Swing votes. After voting, nobles can change their minds and vote in a different. Let's go. Let's see. Let's let's have some chaos. I heard earlier that you are here for chaos. So let's have it now. Vote A B C D. Imagine the wealth to come. I'm not calling in my favor, by the way. For those that promised me their vote, if I voted their way, I'm not calling it in here. Okay, B is the clear winner, I think. But someone might change their vote now. Does it happen now? When does that happen? I don't know. Uh, the Archbishop delay, uh, delivers angry sermons and ber said Bertrand's cathedral about the chiefs worshipping only at the altar of greed. 
Meanwhile, the Chiefs make a small fortune from selling anti-venom to an outrageous <laughs> market. Well, we have discovered uh, pharmaceuticals. And the pharmacy industry is now alive and well in the north. It happens during the countdown. It happens during the vote. You can't just do another input. Ah, okay. Or as long as the vote is open. All right. Uh, suck it, church. Suck it, archbishop. <laughs> the poor archbishop. Northern peasants grumble that a single bottle costs more than a week's wage and many can't afford the treatment at all. But working the fields without is, is nearly impossible. Down the stability goes and farming is now barren. Very good. With all this trade, you can so easily get money. The royal wedding. An incorruptible. I think we go for the royal wedding first. What do you mean farming? That's no longer farming. That's just dust watching what you're doing. Yes, go import. It'd be the fantastic markets. Yes, the wedding is to Rudolfo is the talk of the town. Let's see. I do. I do marry him. Queen and husband. After the wedding, of course, there's a feast. And after the feast, a dance and feast. Our new husband, Rudolfo, delivers. See, this might be a bad union. We are not brow mates. This, this might not turn out well. We'll see. At the feast, our new husband, Rudolfo, delivers a long rambling speech that puts everyone to sleep. <laughs> Past midnight, we're tired. You better get used to life in the capital. I had to. What are your thoughts on the state of the kingdom? Well, you know, the kingdom looks after itself. Ah, uh, does it? Immediately changes the topic, talking about something he's more interested in than the kingdom. I'm just a humble follower of the ninth god teaching, and everywhere I look, I'm surrounded by sinners and heathens. I can't wait to laugh at them from the thereafter. Oh god, I've married an utter twit. No, no, it's so interesting. So interesting. <laughs> I can't exist in peace. What, because we're watching you? <laughs> Farming for pharmaceuticals. Amazing. These seem like peaceful years in my kin. Lovely. Anyway, continue on the subject. He gently falls asleep to the sound of him droning on about himself. Very good. Let's go to the south now. Oh, the speech was boring. I want to bury a monarch under my pillar trap. Your Holiness, the incorruptible corpse of St. Umbur has become a sensation among the faithful. Every day the pilgrims visit my manor to pray at his feet. But their muddy but their muddy feet are ruining my carpets. May I take St. Umbur's body on a tour of the kingdom instead? After all, the regions outside the south could do with a little reminder of the ninth power. Your Majesty, if I make a suggestion, perhaps we could study the phenomenon instead of mindlessly worshipping it. Heresy! Everyone, cover your ears before she says anything more. Right. Um. Well, I will not allow him to be reburied. That would be an affront to the god. It was much effort putting up. Yes. This treasurer has a great head on her shoulders. I think Santa Uma should be on should be the monarch, I say. <laughs> exactly. You think Sant Umber should be the monarch? I'll cast your vote then. The North is a little bit overrepresented right now. I'm feeling. All right, have the saint examined by the scholars, apparently. Voting is closed. 
Ignoring Grandee Hat 50's protests, you pack off the Saints corpse to Quail University for examination. Perhaps there's a scientific explanation for the body's lack of decay. The Archbishop is just as scandalized as Grandee Hat 50 for weeks priests condemn your name in churches across the land. How could you scrutinize a miracle? Alright. There's two falls to that. Let us go end this season here. Deep in the back rooms of the royal palace, the southern grandees are poring over the secret letters and scribbled diagrams. On the wall is a corkboard filled with pins and crisscross colored string. The queen has married Rodolfo, praise the ninth. Now she just needs to get on with producing an heir. We can't hold off the other regions forever. Indeed, the clock is ticking. Priests are fleeing in the east. In droves, whatever dark deeds the counts have planned, they can't be good. Then we've got to keep up our efforts. Queen Fabia isn't going anywhere on our watch. Grandees must continue to aim the queen, countering the other region's schemes. They will win the game if the queen produces an heir and completes their ambition. Alright. A long lost nephew. Ascension. The north is strong, but they're not getting where they need to get there. There really have been no ways to increase the treasure. It's true. The only way is to rebel. That is also true. It's also the way of the north. The north. Let's see. Horror at the university. That sounds like fun. Let's check this out. Something was deeply wrong with that scent you sent us, your majesty. It's been a tragedy at the Faculty of Dangerous Theology. Er, a worse one that, than usual. Ninth above. They were in the middle of examining St. Umber when his eyes blazed with light. Half the students and all the professors were instantly reduced to dust and bones. We need money to compensate bereaved families and train up a new professors as well clean up the mess. This is the judgment of the ninth. Why study things that you don't understand? We should just worship them or fear them, depending on what the holy text tells us. Well, we can't hire anyone. We don't have money. We can lower the treasury. That's what you can do. Grandees who voted to scrutinize the saint's power instead of believing in it. How could the counts lower your faith? Well, ew, they went all raiders of the lost ark. Oh, that's a very apt comparison. So, we'll allow some swing voting here. <laughs> Replace the scholars with priests. Uh huh. Dust is going scorched earth. Ah, okay, they changed their mind to A. <clears throat> All right, I think nothing will change the outcome of this vote anymore. If there's no treasury, then no one can afford to watch dust anymore. <laughs> it's true. What? This isn't what I meant at all. Quail University soon finds itself staffed with low-level members of the clergy who proceed to teach the students the fundamentals of Ninthis Orthodoxy. The church is delighted, of course, but it turns out that the history of the Ninth Conquest over the other eight gods has no real bearing on architecture, metallurgy, or military theory. Um, across the kingdom, industries suffer and decline. Armies find themselves unable to recruit competent officers. All right, everything suffers. Literally everything. Meanwhile, St. Umber is quietly reburied to prevent this happening again. Oh, well. A dynasty event. Hmm. Perhaps. I just want peace and quiet from the crown spies. What crown spies? We don't have such things. The Archbishop's Ray. You're enjoying a peaceful breakfast when the Archbishop barges into the dining hall, waving a scrap of paper. Your Majesty, there's an outrage. 
Bess was nailed to the door of the cathedral this morning by some two-bit priest called Smolt Lemon Grave. What is it? It's an essay to cry the search, making all sorts of fantastical accusations. accusations. What exactly are these issues? He claims that we're corrupt just because we're selling premium tickets to a cushy afterlife at a hundred gold a pop. Smolt lemon grave, yes. Someone keeps watching you. <laughs> <laughs> So the North will never have peace unless you hold the ground? Okay, sure, sure, sure. It claims that we are correct, yeah. And it wants the church to officially change the fourth sentence of page 118 of the Holy Book so that it forbids selfishness instead of elfishness. It claims it's a typo just because elves aren't real. It even criticizes my hat. Says it's about much. How dare he? Someone summoned Mr. Luther. First name, Martin. Smells like heresy to me, your majesty. I can have a pyre built in the city square before noon. Track down Smolt Lemon Grave and have him burned at the stake. Oh boy, that's... That's a little bit crazy, isn't it? Um... That's discrimination against elves. Why is the old gods are better? They like elves. It's true. Let them be blind, my kin. They will not see our ways. I have no inclination. I don't know. We'll we'll just see what happens. What what does the council say? <laughs> Discriminate the knife ears. What have they ever done to you? All right. Apparently, he will be burned. Before the end of the day, Smolt Lemongrave is tied to a stake in the city square. As the flames lick at his feet, he shouts that these words will not die with him. He's right. A splinter faction of the church uses the new Fangles printing press to churn out thousands of copies of the so-called Marty's Missive. Lemongrave's criticism ring true to the peasantry, especially in light of his persecution. Maybe selfishness is bad? Maybe even worse than being an elf? <laughs> Soon there are widespread riots across the kingdom and the church is wildly scorned as a venal and corrupt. Well, that's a, that's a problem. And there's some famine up in the north, apparently. Uh, hello, your majesty. Hey, I've traveled all the way from the north to beg you to do something about the price of grain. I can't afford to feed my family. A day of back-breaking work isn't enough to buy a day's worth of bread. She's right. The grain price in the north is beyond all control. Greedy merchants rake in profit while the common folk starve. Let their faith bind them in their infighting. Mm -hmm. uh. Let's see. Subsidize the grain. The free market will correct itself in due time. Well. I stopped you from giving out food. This was the emperor. We took him down because he did that. I didn't stop you. It was my predecessor. Let's see what you vote now, people. Free market will correct in time, apparently. We wait for the free market to solve everyone's problems and continue to wait. Any day now, you're sure of it. 
Defines is crumbling. Stability is unstable. While we wait, famine ravages the north as the price of grain continues to escalate. Good. Well, thank you, great grand free market. Well, now it's time for an auction again. And I will call in some votes for money. You remember those votes you owe me? How could the free market fail us with such trade? Sounds fake. When did the North become the hypercapitalist? Well, they became hypercapitalist when they pumped the prices of uh, of medicine. Yes. So I will, I will, I will take your votes. Each vote is worth five hundred gold to me. So, you, so you can you can sell your vote back to me. If you buy a grand bazaar. Let's start the auction here. Five hundred gold for the vote you owe me. <laughs> Dust is so smart about this. Just, just put one gold in, you know. Oh god, is this gonna be a bidding war going up by one gold? Are you decreasing farming in the north? Your people have zero anything. Why are you decreasing farming in the north? What? <laughs> You're really just you absolutely. You want that to happen, huh? All right. It sounds fun. That arrow is going the wrong way. Famine for all. I mean, if you have a deer park, then... You can't farm there. A monument... And a deer park. Okay, let's talk about our air real quick. He cares more about the ninth god than our openness. There's no spark. Still need an air. Something is missing, yeah. I think this time is gonna be a bastard child. I'm sure we have one. In the emergency bastard child box. There must be one. Let them be angry at their queen. Okay, I can see where you're going. The church won't be happy, but they're just as keen to avoid the civil war as we are. They legitimize the bastard without much fuss. I will meet with the archbishop tomorrow. One from the sheep king is laying around. Is that why we are going with the bastard? Just to avoid inbreeding. Listen! Listen. Who says the bastard isn't inbred either? They might be too. Don't judge now. True Believers is a dynasty event. Strange crops. And those are all the ones we have. So, we haven't been to the east in a while. Let's go visit them. The harvest in the east has been an utter disaster. Look at this turnip. Don't point that thing at me. Well, let me take a look. The turnip is riddled with rot and twisted into a grotesque shape of a skull. Half the harvest is like this. We need to help if we get if we're to get through the winter. I think the people will just starve everywhere. Um Yep. The people will just starve everywhere. Of course it's a scow. Let's go, people. Let's send for the university, which we replaced with with uh, clergy. <laughs> yeah, okay. Apparently this is nothing to worry about. 
apparently we're all in agreement. It's just doesn't matter. I mean, who who do, don't question the skull. Yes. It comes from the east. Nothing is weird in the east. What should be done about the... There's nothing. You'll regret this action, your majesty. Mark my words. Stability is now turbulent. Defiance is now aggrieved. In the end, more than half of the East harvest is blighted by rotten malformed into the shape of skulls of gnarled hands. A bleak winter lies ahead. Cause behind the blight is not hit, Joan. East and sooth they are worn of a terrible omen. <laughs> Look at the farming. Nothing gets done in the East either. The turnips are still good, taste like death. Oh my god. Alright, let's talk about the true believers then. Your majesty, what was a small to lemon grave are only growing more powerful. Now they're calling themselves the United Separatist Church of Radical Reformation and True Belief. All the true believers, for sure, thank God. How are they so influential so quickly? What do you expect me to do about it? No, no wh why? It's also a curse between printing presses. They're spreading pamphlets across the kingdom faster than we can confiscate them. Then some of my priests are being convinced. What can we do? They want to get rid of me and my hat. Uh, we could just burn everyone. We could just burn absolutely everyone. Um... Oh boy. I don't think we want this. We're near our goal. Let the pamphlet circulate. Burn the knife your followers. It's honestly a little bit difficult to say what might be a good option sometimes. I like this. It's very This is difficult. Like I don't know what to what what would be good. So the pamphlets circulate. A blizzard of anti-church pamphlets flurry across the kingdom. You've never seen the archbishop look so wretched. The common folk are grow panicked and angry. Several churches are burned, priests are driven out of the villages by stone hurling mobs. We have no food, no faith. A schism in the church appears inevitable. Let's end this season. And, um... Yeah, I think the chiefs... Stuck in the internal war. The realm will be ripe. Everything is gonna fall apart. I like, I like your confidence in our future here. I, I like it. I think the chiefs, they can pay a little bit more. No, that's fine. Tax everyone. No, 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 no. Just the chief. No, no, no. We can't pay the grandees. Can't. Trust me. No rebellion. Nothing going on yet. Council on the verge of it, sure. Bones for sale. Refugee crisis. A schism in the church. I see some rebellions trying to get in there, but... Um, you're in the wrong faction. <laughs> Sorry, Steve, cut out. Did you say, anyone said rebellion? No, 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 no. No one said rebellion. That's silly. Let's talk about that schism in the church, eh? Shall we? That's more interesting. The Archbishop arrives at seeing us. Never seen him look so defeated. My priests are at each other. Throats over this true believer nonsense. I come as well going over to them in robes. I think the church is going to split in two, please. Can the council help me stop this madness? 
My inquisition is too small. That's a problem. Triple my numbers. No quadruple. I need an army. Uh-huh. Oh, good God. Is any of this decent at all? I think... This needs to be a quick one. Make your choices. Yeah, 15 seconds. And I will click continue once the time is up. Okay, maybe I won't. <laughs> All right, okay. So uh, the Northmen finally finished their first ambition step there. While the church is destructed, we shut down the monasteries and confiscate their gold. All in all, it gets us a tidy profit. Of course, it just weakens the church further, as well as making our enemy of the nobles. We don't appreciate a greed. In the end, the war between the church and the true believers end in stalemate. The true believers set up a, west, a vast enclave in the east with its own laws and government. Stability is now anarchic. <laughs> Military is now inadequate. The church has never been weaker and your own rule is starting to look pretty weak as well. Authority is ineffective. Faith can't go lower. <laughs> oh, God. Ah, uh, let's, um... How dare the queen be greedy? Only I can be greedy. Who's <laughs> We now need to keep the stability at one. Uh, let's 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 talk about those bones for sale, shall we? Your holiness, some accursed grave robbers have dug up my ancestor's stained umber. They've boiled him down to his bones. Doesn't he have like laser eyes? Can't he defend himself? As holy red, the gullible peasants believe each bone brings good fortune and keeps away vermin. We must put a stop to it. Um. <laughs> oh God. <sighs> get stability at one chiefs. Well, now I need to get. Let's just vote. Let's see what you have to do. Where you want to go with this? Mm-hmm. Allow the sale of the bones to continue, apparently. Voting is closed. Upon my honor, you'll do nothing? The bones can't bring good fortune, however, they bring a curse. Farmer's corpse wither. Merchants' wagons throw a wheel. Ah. <laughs> uh. Bad luck settles in the south. Like a garrote across the throat. Oh boy, that was bad. Hypercapitalism has never done us wrong in the north yet. <laughs> it's true. Let's talk about this refugee crisis, shall we? <laughs> Dust looks at these star bastards. Yeah, it works. Works perfectly. The East experienced a terrible famine, Your Highness, and a steady trickle of refugees have been pouring into the South. Yes, terrible tragedy. They're looking for food and steady work, but finding neither, they turn to begging. The streets of the southern cities are crowded with Eastern vagrants. I'm sorry that my suffering of my people are clogging up the precious Southern Straits. They need help, not judgment. But will the Council give it? Well, we, we are definitely not closing the roads out of the east. That's out of the question. Else, make up your minds, council. Let's build a wall around the south and make the queen pay for it. Keep them away. No. A very split vote on the northern 
champions there. Voting is closed. Let's vote. What should be done about the refugees flocking to the east and to the south? Okay, let's see. By distributing grain among the peasants who remain in the east, you alleviate the suffering and reduce the flow of refugees. So, stability goes up a little bit. Farming is now barren. Defiance is reduced to mutinous. But those who have already made their way to the south prove unwilling to return to their homeland, fearing more famine around the corner. Tensions heightened between the counts and grandees. Very good. Very good. You know what I've I've been thinking, I've been thinking. I wanted to do a, a Crusader Kings three giveaway for the base game. I I gave away two DLC tonight. That's great, but no one really has an interest in the Crusader Kings three base game, which I think is a little bit sad. But I understand. So instead, we're gonna switch the giveaway for the Crusader Kings three base game to a copy of this on Steam. Um, so anyone who might want a copy of this. All you got to do, all you got to do right now, is be a follower or a subscriber, either of that, and then just uh, say in the chat that you would like to. Uh, wait, I've set up a, a phrase for that. Let me, let me, let me check. Give me one. So, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> yeah, I understand. It's good stuff. Okay, so we're gonna do a keyword thing. And um, the keyword is going to be. Can I do the keyword bastard? <laughs> would it be blocked? Uh, no, I think the keyword will be eyebrows. You have all the. That's great. You you guys are in the right place. We usually do a lot of CK three, uh, but tonight we we are looking into this because actually this is really really fun. I think. So, King of the Castle, if you want King of the Castle on Steam, uh, type in eyebrows in chat. So, eyebrows. This will be your keyword. And I think I set this up properly. I think. So, yeah. I think it's going, so you just do it. Uh, let's see, next one is... Oh, end of the season, all right. While playing a game of chess in an austere castle, two counts of the East discuss their schemes against the crown. By Xenia's ashes, the queen must get a grip on the kingdom. We can't allow her to join our secret society of immortals, but she can hardly keep her crown on the head. Counts aim to raise authority to at least five. Back at Chief Dust Clanhold, the chief plot is finally picking up pace. The villagers are getting rowdy, and it's all thanks to us. Now that they know how much wealth the queen is hiding, they're itching to get rid of her. Careful, we don't get them too riled up, and mind, well, they'll stop asking questions about our wealth as well. Ah, and now is the time to incite some real chaos. Show them that the Queen Fabia is not only greedy, she's utterly incompetent too. Uh, chiefs must lower stability below four. Well. The plan is finally coming together, Dust. Yeah. Yeah. How's the rebellion report looking? Nothing. Everyone is on the verge of rebellion. I don't understand why. We have been doing great. Fantastic, even. Oh. <laughs> okay. Alright. Okay, then. We have the thing rebellion here. Let's, let's look at that. That sounds interesting enough for me. At long last, the Counts have reached their boiling point. We are confronted over the throne room by the Count Kementari. 
A smile as sharp as a scalpel. The Council of the East won't bring you down, Pretender. To the throne, we will rise up and fight for Kaya, the true monarch. There's a formal declaration of war. The next time we see each other, we'll be on the battlefield. <laughs> okay, it's time. Everyone is just rebelling now. Every single one. All of them. Good stuff. One day we'll see your head on a spike. The defiance is now treasonous. Count Kimitari strides from the throne room without looking back. I didn't expect them to move so boldly. What are our chances against rebels? Pretty good. The Counts are exactly a military powerhouse. Look at that. Uh, I hope they don't persuade other regions to join the rebellion. That would be disastrous. How did things get so bad? As a reason for the uprising, she's citing your past transgressions, mainly your complete apathy. Regarding the missing Eastern Bees. Urge to murder is rising. Is it too late to apologize? It is. Not the time is for swords, not for words. So, civil war now? Kingdom is divided. There will be a lot of death and suffering before all of this is over. I can't wait. I'll dig out the trebuchets. Okay. Even the loyalists have one vote to rebel. Oh boy. I have the bees now. <laughs> Bee hating bastard. I can't excuse tyranny, but I draw the line at bees. Bees, that's a tipping point, yes. Let's see. The opening strike. Let's let's have it. It's been a long time coming. Over 300 years ago, when the East was conquered. But before that, we were our own rulers, with a lineage of monarchs stretching back a thousand years. The glory days. Indeed, and that is why we must rise up by placing Kai on the throne. And we will reclaim that what we have lost. But first, we must decide on tactics. My fellow counts, I ask you, how shall we strike first? We can launch a preemptive strike against the chiefs to cripple their military capabilities. If we suspect the Drandees may join our cause, we can call them to war. I'll be more likely to join us if the Queen's authority is low. We can also call upon the church to condemn the queen, or finally we could send off an assassin to nip this in the bud. Alright, counts, this is all you. Let's see what you got. Let's see what you want to do with this. Call upon the grandees to join your cause. The grandees are loyal. Well, the counts have a single voice here. So. The counts attempt to smuggle a secret message to the grandees, but your watch intercepted and bring it to us. You scan the letter, muttering under your breath, as the audacity of the rebels, a court of loyal grandees. Absolute poppycock. How dare they? I have them bore the live in troll snot. I read the message aloud at the next council session in a mocking voice. The grandees laugh uproariously, especially after you shoot them a particularly <laughs> stern glare. Well, they really are loyalists. Uh huh. They sure are. Larion the Haunted. The Haunted. Whoops, sorry. Fellow Counts, ever since Queen Fabia returned Larion's teapot to us, I have kept it safe. Let did you know that this teapot contained the spirit of ancient King Larion the Haunted. And now Larion's power will spell the Queen's end. Larion has transformed into a creature of pure fire, clearly a punishment from the deposed gods of burning his family alive. The question is, how can we make use of him? Okay, Counts. Sneak the teapot inside the royal palace to assassinate the queen. Send the demon to the front lines to join your forces in battle. Send a laddie into the north and wreak havoc. Ghost tea. Send the 
System error has declared themselves no longer loyalist. Unacceptable. <laughs> All right. Let's go ball then. The Chiefs aren't rebelling. You must you must have heard that on fake news media. There is just one but two ghost T Pokemon. Are there? The absent queen. Excuse me? I'm maybe the absent queen after all this. I'll have to drink myself to death. <laughs> Look at him. Thy work be done, Council of the East. I will lay waste to this false queen in the name of the, the of the Drakovs. At the next battle, the great gout of fire disintegrates the front lines. But those are lucky those are the lucky ones. Anyone nearby is roasted slowly to death. While the singed survivors flee in terror. Rebels gain a victory point. Everyone else is kind of reduced militarily. The East has gained a powerful new weapon. Oh boy. Uh, let's end the season then. One based on black tea and one based on matcha. Okay. Let's see the rebellion report. Two rebels currently rebelling. Thank you, loyalists. Thank you. You're keeping us in the throne here. More treachery. Opening strike. Our air. Let's check our air first. We have a child. My legitimized natural born son. If he can survive this. Faith is now irrelevant in the south as well. Your majesty. May I be the first to congratulate you and legitimize your son. What is his name? Fabia the second. Wonderful your majesty. I'm sure little Fabia will grow to be a chip of the old block. Congratulations on finding an heir. Now you just need to fulfill your ambition. Expect a visit from your spy master soon. Okay, more treachery. Dire news, your majesty. The north has sent a horde of berserk warriors to support the counts in the field. Well, have they turned against us? Afraid so. Or we chop off his head on the block. Listen now. He's just a child. The chiefs have formally joined the rebellion, declaring you a tyrant. I won't lie, your majesty. The odds are stacked against us now. Well, let's see your opening strike then. My dear chiefs to the north, thank you for joining us in our righteous war against the tyrant queen, Fabia. Ah, it's no trouble. Point us in the right direction and we'll start chopping off heads. See? You're, you're, you're speaking with their voice. You're, you've got it down. All in good time, my friend. First, you must decide where to direct your opening strike. We can launch a preemptive strike against the Grandees and cripple the military capabilities. If we suspect the Grandees might join our cause, we can call them to war. Or finally, we could send off an assassin to nip this in the bud. Dishonorable, of course, but convenient. Let's see. North, chiefs. What do you want to do? How are you going to try and uh, skin this cat? North, a distant friend, welcome to the meat hall. You got to vote though. Oh, very, very low vote. Launch preemptive strike on the grandees. A cheese lance, a surprise attack on the south, slashing and burning their way across fields and farmlands. Before they can get too far, however, the southern army springs an ambush, catching the northern soldiers totally unawares. Well, 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 well. Look at who's the best warriors now. Loyalists gain a victory point. Military is now mediocre. Praise the ninth. No mercy for traitors. Long live the queen. 
The Northern Army forced into disorderly retreat back to their own lands, losing demoralized troops to ambush and desertion along the way. You guys can't even fight together. Told you we should have sent an assassin. <laughs> Alright. Auction time. Let's see. Honestly, you can't really make it any much worse, so... Let's see what happens. Very good, very smart. A grand bazaar. A and F it will be. Trade go up. Dance queen dance. In the theater. The grandees are also the verge of rebellion. <laughs> Something's wrong? What? Ah, greetings, your highness. Do you have a moment? Of course. I've spoken to my fellow grandees and we're all in agreement. You are not capable of leading us to victory in this war. <laughs> we would think it would be best you step down before we realm ourselves any further. Are you suggesting I abdicate? Not suggesting, your holiness. Warren sent word to Countess Northwinning. She agreed the truth if we step if you step down. Sorry, your Majesty, but this is only a choice. You have lost the confidence of your vassal. Abdicate or face a kingdom united against you. Listen, I will face a kingdom united against us. <laughs> Turns out that the ordinary people of the capital have no desire to wage war against the rest of the kingdom on your behalf. You rant and rave from your throne, but your orders are ignored. <laughs> the united rebel armies sweep through the crown lands, meeting no resistance. They arrive at the capital to find the gates wide open, and Grandee Sistemera waiting to discuss what to do about the queen. Fusion warrior. My very best loyal servant. Thank you for the trust you put in me until the last. We could make it look like an accident. Works for me as long as she's dead. You're still sitting on your throne, shouting orders that no one listens. When Countess North Windyman arrives, leading a group of grim-faced soldiers. The official story is that you tragically tripped and fell down the steps in front of your throne. Directly onto the sword. <laughs> Bad luck, really. <sighs> we lost all authority here. All right, make a choice. Who who steps up to the throne? You had a pillar ready. Make it look like a car crash. <laughs> Fantastic. Apparently, Oscar. Becomes the next king. And that's that. During a rebellion, the loyalists decided the rebels had the right idea about Queen Fabia. She was unceremoniously murdered. The counts, led by North Winian, launched a rebellion that accomplished nothing besides further eroding the queen's authority. Unable to keep their puppet on the throne, the grandees were forced to retreat to the secluded villas and brood. It wouldn't be long before a new southern claimant would rise, and when they did, the grandees would be ready. With the Queen's credibility in tatters, Oscar of the Chiefs seized the moment and seized the throne. Long live the North. Rat! Huzzah, huzzah, you did it! <laughs> Very good, let's see. Game length, two years and six months. Rudolfo of the South, King Oscar is the successor. Nobles. Fusion Warrior, you, you did all you could to save me. Keep me on the throne. 
Ah. Such a shame.